stripping isolation from copper wires is an essential task for most of us. Today we will compare several wire strippers and will find out if the German strippers are really better than the Asian, as quite a few viewers suggested. And we will find out which strippers would fit a typical American president. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. I bought seven different strippers for that comparison. But why American presidents come into play? According to ThoughtCo, 47% of the last 15 presidents were left-handed. And because I'm also left-handed, I'm good enough to check if these tools would fit for all presidents or not. The price range is considerable, from $2.96 to $63.20. The most expensive one claims that it can strip 32 to 7 AWG wires. The ranges of the others are smaller, but most of them cover what we would consider maker wires. Two of them are made in Germany, the rest comes from China. Most of them are called automatic. The manual strippers only cover a smaller range. We need two of them if we want to cover the whole range. Today we will strip wires from 30 to 10 AWG. Why? Because that is all I have in my lab. We will remove PVC as well as silicon isolation. Most of my wires are stranded with silicon isolation. I prefer silicon over PVC because those wires are much more flexible and they do not melt at soldering temperatures. Silicon is softer and therefore easier to strip, so expect more problems with PVC. The only solid copper wire in this test is the 30AWG wrap wire. Everybody knows what silicon is, but what the hell is AWG? It is the abbreviation for American Wire Gauge. Most American units are weird. Our US friends must be much more intelligent than the rest of us. This is why they keep this odd system, from miles to feet and inches. They even have two different sorts of miles. And I heard that, because the woman's right movement intervened timely, they only have one unit for feet, otherwise they would have a female and a male foot. To increase complexity, they do not use the decimal system. They use fractions like 1 16th of an inch. Because of our limited mental capacity, we had to invent a simple metric and the decimal system. But there is one exception. The AWG system is much easier than our metric system. We just have to know that it is a number between 40 and 0. 40 is very, very thin and 0 is very thick. And a wire with a higher number is thinner than one with a lower number. Not exactly logical, but okay if you know it. To be precise, also 00, 000, 000, and 000, 000, 000 are defined. These are extremely thick wires, or should I say horizontally challenged wires, to be politically correct. Now the metric system for wires could have been invented by the Germans. Very precise. It needs a few digits after the decimal point for the thinner wires. Way too complicated for my taste. Also because you have to decide if you want to use the diameter or the area of the copper. Anyway, this was a long excuse for why I will use AWG and not millimeter square. I love simplicity. The strippers use two different principles. Most of them have grippers and cutting blades. During the action, the blades cut into the isolation and move away from the gripper, where the wire is fixed. We identified three critical areas. First, the gripper has to be able to fix the wire during stripping. Second, the cutter blade has to cut the isolation as much as possible, but not the copper. And third, the blades have to strip the cut plastic off the copper. All three areas can fail. 
Usually the first failure defines the usable range a stripper works. And all of the tools have a wire cutter to shorten wires. One stripper has no grippers, only cutters. So the operator has to hold the wire during cutting. This is why these are usually called manual and the others automatic. Here we have a list of all seven strippers, starting with the cheapest up to the most expensive one. I call the first Toy. You will see later why. The second one is called FS-D3. The third is the yellow and the fourth is called Tuso. Then come the manual cutters. As said before, we need two of them to cover the whole range. This is why they are here. Together they cost 13.44. This was the Chinese fraction. Now come the Germans, the Yokari and the Knipex. Let's look a little closer to the details of each cutter, starting from the one I call Toy. One part of the gripper looks like a blade, and the cutter is made of spring steel, bent and sharpened. The rest of the spring steel delivers the opening force after stripping. There are no real blades and nothing can be changed or sharpened. The sound is very plasticky and I'm not sure if it would survive more than a few hundred movements. It is specified from 24 to 12 AWG. I do not have 24 AWG wires. This is the closest I have. 0.22 mm square German wire. Unfortunately, the blades quite often also cut one of the stranded wires and weaken others that they will break much easier later on. Clearly too much pressure on the blades for these small wires. The 12 AWG is a thick wire for this little toy. But here it performs flawlessly. The cutter-like gripper leaves deep marks on the isolation. And you have to apply quite some pressure to strip wires. The right-handed can profit from this training. Your handshake definitely will improve and in future your business partners will think you are a sincere person. Definitely a plus for only three dollars. The wire cutter does not work at all. It just does not cut the wires. What about the left-handers? No problem, but I doubt that any president would want to have one of those. The next one is called FS-D3. It has a typical shape. It is used in a horizontal position. This concept allows the stripping of very short wires. The grippers are quite short and it has a length stop. It is rated from 28 to 10 AWG and it even strips 30 AWG wires without a problem. The only thing because the blades open quite early, the isolation stays on the copper already if I strip 10 mm. No big deal, it easily can be removed by hand, but it is an additional step. I try 10 AWG with the slider in the back position, and it does not work. With the slider in the front position, it works. It cuts where you expect, and the removed isolation is 10 mm. Also here, the holder jaws leave a visible mark. The stripping did not need a lot of force. Left-handers can work with it without problems. Americans probably will not love it because it only has metric scales on both sides. The next one looks quite different. It is used in a vertical position. The mechanics are heavy duty and for sure it will last for quite a while. The blades are tiny and cannot be replaced. It has a limit stop which is a little bit too small. It leaves room for the wires to pass. It is rated from 24 to 10 AWG. The 24 AWG wire is stripped flawlessly without too much force. Let's try 10 AWG. This wire hardly fits the opening. The cutter caresses the isolation more than it cuts it. A complete fail. This stripper will go to where it came from, into the bin for bad examples. Also, it is useless for left-handers. Only President James Garfield would have been able to use it. Anecdotes indicate that he was ambidextrous and could write with both hands at the same time. 
I can tell you, this is not an anecdote. We Swiss even can mirror write with the left hand in parallel with writing with the right hand. You don't believe me? Next is the Tuso. If you look at this one and compare it with the Knipex, it is evident that Knipex copied the Chinese design. Or is it the other way around? They look absolutely the same. And at the end of the test we will see if they also perform the same. The Tuso is rated from 32 to 7 AWG. Let's start with 30 AWG. I have two different wires. The skinny wire wrap and a silicon stranded wire. This stripper does not stop at the copper and cuts both wires right away. Also the 26 AWG silicon wires. Definitely not a winner here. It cuts the 10 AWG silicon isolation without any problems and does not need a lot of force for operation. And it has no adjustment slider on the top. Maybe it would have helped the thin silicon wires to have one. And the presidents? This would be a perfect fit for an American left-handed president. Because this scale is in inches for left-handers. It would be metric for the right-handed. The cutter works okay. The next are manual strippers. They have a distinct place for each wire diameter. This is why they can cut the isolation not only on the top and the bottom. They leave a very even cut. However, there are two disadvantages. You cannot strip short wires because you cannot hold the remaining wire with your fingers. And you have to buy two different tools if you want a range from 10 to 30 AWG. It also needs more force than most of the other strippers. And pay attention. Always use the next bigger hole. If you use the right hole, some wires are always removed together with the isolation. This does not happen if you use the bigger cutters. Which means it only works to 12 AWG without cutting wires. From a mechanical point of view, they should last for a long time, because all moving parts are solid metal and you do not always use the same cutters. Concerning the wire cutters, one of them cuts even 10 AWG wires perfectly. The other one, unfortunately not. The price of the two tools together is very close to the Tuso and the Yokari. If you only need one, it is a cheap solution. And they do not care about left or right-handed personnel. The next is the first Made in Germany competitor. It is the original Yokari Super 4 Plus. What a name! Only the word Mega is lacking. All other buzzwords are here. Well done, marketing manager. But on this channel, we do not care about names. We care about capabilities. Its levers are vertically when the wire is horizontal, like with a yellow one. And for me, it looks like a hungry crocodile's mouth. A close look reveals that they use a different design for the grippers and the blades. Both are in a V shape. Their creative marketing manager probably would say, we like victory. And the blades are not mounted vertically as with the others. They are mounted in an angle of about 30 degrees. All seems well thought out. German engineering, I would say. It is rated from 24 to 10 AWG. And really, the 30 AWG wrapping wire does not work. 30 AWG silicon wire works fine. After stripping, it always leaves the isolation on the copper. It seems that it is by design if you have a closer look at the shape of this part. Which is not bad if you want to package wires because they will be much less hurt. If you are going to continue with soldering, it is an additional manual step to remove them. What about 10 AWG? If we start to press, we already see the problem. The two blades do not cut at the same place. And the cut is all but perfect. 
This was not a big problem for the smaller wires, even the 12 AWG wire is stripped without any problems. But the 10 AWG does not work. Maybe the specifications were also exaggerated by marketing? Anyway, it does not need a lot of force and the sound is okay. I assume it will last a few years for a typical maker. The price is at the level of the Tuso, which is very okay for a German product. And the left-handed presidents? All okay. They even see the address where they can complain if they are not happy with the product. The last one must be the queen or the king. It costs five times more than the Yokari or the Tuso. And the packaging is the worst. They seem to know their customers. The inherent value is what counts for us, not the glossy packaging. As said before, it looks nearly like the Tuso. The only difference is the red handle and the color of the metal. It is rated from 32 to 7 AWG. Let's test the thinnest wire in the lab. No problem at all. And the thickest? No problem too. The only thing I could criticize is that the cut is not entirely round. Parts of the plastic was not cut, just torn apart. It nearly needs no force and the movement is exceptionally smooth. I attribute it to the cutter plates. They are a bit thinner than the ones of the Tuso and most probably harder and sharper. This has another advantage. Because they can work with minimal force, the chance you hurt the copper is also reduced, which can be important for the long-term quality of the stripped wires. This is the only stripper where you can buy replacement cutters for a long life of the tool. I did not check, but the chance is that a replacement cutter is more expensive than one of the other cutters. The wire cutter works very well, and most of the presidents would probably like it because it also displays inches for the left-handers. Maybe one not, because it's made in Germany, but this one anyway is right-handed. Summarized. Two tools failed completely, the toy and the yellow. The yellow one might be okay for an electrician who always cuts these solid wires with a size of around 20 AWG. Here the tool works flawlessly and it is not for left-handers. The Tuso is a shameless copy of the Knipex multi-strip. However, it cuts the thinner wires rather than stripping the isolation off. Otherwise, a good choice. In one of my recent videos I said I like my manual strippers. This is still true, but I'm astonished how good the automatic ones work, especially the wide range they cover without adjustments. I was not able to test the tools for longevity and I assume we would see some differences there. But an average maker does not strip thousands of wires per month, so this might be less of an argument. The FS-D3 has the best price performance ratio. It works on thin as well as on thick wires and it only costs $5. The Yokari is not optimal because it has a rather small range. If you do not use extremely thin or thick wires and you want to buy German, it is a good choice and the price is right. I will replace my manual cutters with the Knipex Multistrip. It clearly is the best choice and I spent the money anyway. Maybe you share your experience with stripping tools in the comments. It would be valuable for others. I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon and viewers using my links for their purchases for supporting the channel. Without you, it would be difficult for me to do what I do now, especially tests like this one. Bye.